Hello, I'm Dr Claire Lawrence and I'm an Associate Prof and Lecturer here in the School of Psychology at the University of Nottingham and this is a course on aggression. And I'm going to kick off by talking about the MAOA gene, sometimes and quite grandly called the warrior gene. And this gene was a source of really quite a lot of excitement in the mid-2000s when it was seen as really potentially a great discovery in understanding why people might become aggressive and other people don't. And in fact, in one case in the United States, uh, an offender had their sentence reduced from the death penalty to a mere 32 years of uh, imprisonment, life imprisonment, because he was found to be carrying this low activity version of the gene. Since then, we've become a little bit less gung-ho about this gene, and really, as we'll see uh, in the next few minutes, things are a lot more complex than as uh, initially thought. So when we think about why people might become aggressive, we tend to think about a number of different levels of variance that might be important. We can think about what it is about the individual, we can think about what it is about their history, their background, and we can think about what it is about the initial environment they are in at the time that they become aggressive in their behaviour. And all these things are important. But when we look at the individual in terms of the static factors in that individual that are unlikely to change over time, we can start to look at genes and genetic characteristics. And MAOA is important because what this gene is responsible for is the amount of monoamine oxidase, which is what MAOA is standing for, in the uh, system of the individual. And this is an enzyme which is responsible for breaking down other chemicals, neurotransmitters in the individual and particularly in the brain. And the neurotransmitters that MAOA break down are serotonin, dopamine and noradrenaline. And these are all associated to some or a greater lesser degree with aggressive behaviour and impulsive behaviour too. So if you have a low um, variant activity version of the MAOA gene, then what that will mean is that you have less MAOA in your system. And that means that there will be less MAOA available to break down these uh, neurotransmitters. So you'll have more serotonin, more dopamine and more noradrenaline available in your brain. Now, what that can do, particularly if there is an absolute knockout in MAOA production, is that you have a lot more of these uh, neurotransmitters available in your brain. And you see this in mouse models where you have the experimenters who are able to genetically um, reproduce mice who actually have a knockout version of the MAOA gene. There is no MAOA gene uh, available at all. And at that point, these mice tend to be much more aggressive, much more hostile and much more impulsive in their behaviours. It's very difficult when we do this, when we're looking at human beings, because we don't uh, genetically knock out genes out of human beings, but we can look at natural knockouts that exist. And the initial uh, interest in human knockouts, as it were, was uh, discovered in a large Dutch family in 1978. And what happened here was there were some female members of this Dutch family who had attended genetic counselling because what was happening was that they were noticing males in the family who were repeatedly highly aggressive, highly violent, highly antisocial. They also had quite low IQ and all sorts of other very impulsive behaviours that were being um, enacted by them. And they were seeing this in male members of the family, not just in one group or in one particular family, but across uh, the Netherlands as part of that family and over time too. So this wasn't learned aggressive behaviour, these were cropping up all over the place within this family. And when the genetic tests became sensitive enough, what was revealed was that these aggressive individuals all shared a very uh, unusual knockout version of MAOA, they didn't have this gene active at all. So this gave again a lot of excitement about the fact that this might illustrate that it's very responsible for aggressive behaviour. But this particular type of knockout in humans is extremely rare. Brunner and the uh, group that discovered it, in fact, also said that there is not really evidence for a warrior a gene. It, it isn't the case that by just not having this gene or having low activity versions of this gene, which is more common, is going to make you an aggressive individual. It's not that simplistic. 
What's more important is the combination he proposed of this gene and the context in which aggression is taking place. And a really important study was carried out by Caspi and her colleagues back in 2002. And what was really nice about this study was that it was conducted on a large group of individuals, over a thousand, and what they did was followed them from age three through to about age 26. And they managed to follow them up really closely over those years, which is no mean feat, and made sure that by the end of the study, when everybody was 26, they still had 96% of the people from the original sample still involved in the study. So that's a really strong longitudinal set of data uh, that were collected there. And what they did was they looked at this group. They weren't a particularly special group. They weren't aggressive individuals. They weren't people who'd been arrested. These were people collected from very early on. They collected data about what kinds of maltreatment or abuse they'd had from very early on in their lives. And they collected data on their genetic um, variants of monoamine oxidase gene. And what they were able to then look at was to say, let's have a look at 26 years old and throughout that period. Look at their self-reported aggression. Look at the aggression as viewed by other members, nominated peers or family members or teachers asking about that individual. And looking at diagnostic tests and police records if there were any available. So they had a variety of different ways of looking to see if this individual was indeed aggressive throughout their life and by age 26. And then they could look and say what happened to those individuals when they were young, up to about the age of 11 for example, and what was their genetic contribution as far as MAOA was concerned. Because one of the things that was being discovered again at the time was that early maltreatment was also potentially responsible for changing the neurochemical makeup of people's brain and how much neurochemicals were available that can be associated with aggression like serotonin, dopamine and neuro noradrenaline. And it may well be they proposed that if maltreatment can lead to aggression in later life, then what would be the impact of that maltreatment on individuals who were already potentially vulnerable, who had lower levels of activity in their MAOA gene. And that was the puzzle that they were really trying to solve in this study over a thousand people. When they looked at the extent to which maltreatment resulted in later or was related to later um, aggression, there was a clear significant predictor there. So it was the case for this sample at least, the maltreatment was a predictor. It wasn't inevitable, but it was a predictor of increased aggressive behaviour later in life. When you looked at the effect of low activity MAOA gene, there was no significant effect. So it didn't have a nice straightforward effect there. What did have an effect though, was the interaction between the MAOA gene low activity and those who'd also had some degree of maltreatment in their early years. So it was this interaction really switching on the effect of the maltreatment on later aggressive behavior. So this can help explain a few things. Why those of us maybe with a low activity MAOA don't necessarily go on to become aggressive. Why individuals who have been um, maltreated in our youth don't necessarily go on to be aggressive either. But the combination of these two factors can be a very heightened uh, predictive factor there. And in fact, 85% of males in the sample who had the low activity um, MAOA gene and some uh, maltreatment in their lives went on to become aggressive in their later um, years. So more recent work is now going to look at how MAOA is related to not just the exhibition of aggressive behaviour, but how impulsivity might be the thing that stops uh, individuals stopping themselves from becoming aggressive when they get uh, threatened or provoked in some way.